All right, you are welcome again. Today, let's take this question. Find the range of values of x for which 3x squared minus 3x is greater than or equal to 6 minus 10x. All right, we should find the range of values of x for which 3x squared minus 3x is greater than or equal to 6 minus 10 x now let's go from this place let's take all the terms in our right hand side to our left hand side okay so that means we're going to say 3x squared minus 3x when minus 10x is coming it will be plus 10x and then when 6 is coming it will be minus 6 is greater than or equal to since nothing is there we we'll say greater than or equal to zero okay now we have 3x squared minus 3x plus 10x minus 6. So minus 3x plus 10x is equal to 7x. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Now from this place, let's factorize. So we're going to ask yourself a question. What are the two numbers that when you add them together, it's going to give you 7? Then when you multiply them, it's going to give you minus 18. Because the coefficient of x squared will be multiplied by the coefficient of x raised to power 0. Okay? So the x raised to power 0 here, that is the constant, is minus 6. So 3 times minus 6 is going to give you minus 18. So we're going to find two numbers that when you add it together, it's going to give you 7. And then when you multiply them, it's going to give you minus 18. So the two numbers are 9 and minus 2. So when you say 9 minus 2, it's going to give you 7. Then when you say 9 times minus 2, it's going to give you minus 18. So in the position of plus 7x, we're going to replace it with 9 minus 2. Okay? Because 9 minus 2 is the same as 7. So that means we're going to have 3x squared plus 9x minus 2x minus 6 greater than or equal to 0 okay from this place let's group them 2 by 2 so when we group them we're going to have 3x squared plus 9x in bracket and then minus uh, 2x minus 6 in bracket greater than or equal to 0 so from this place let's factor out the common terms in the first bracket we have 3x squared plus 9x so these two terms what do they have in common we can see clearly that 3x is in common between them. So when we factor out 3x in 3x squared, we will be left with x. Now, we we'll factor out 3x in 9x, we're going to be left with 3. So that when you say 3x times x, it's going to give you 3x squared. And then 3x times 3, it's going to give you 9x. Alright? Good. In the second side, let's also factor out minus 2 so because minus 2 is in common so when you factor out minus 2 in minus 2x you'll be left with x and when you factor out minus 2 in minus 6 you'll be left with plus 3 so that when you say minus 2 times x it's going to give you minus 2x then when you say minus 2 times plus 3 it's going to give you minus 6 then we'll have greater than or equal to 0 okay now in this place we're having two brackets and the two bracket contains the same values okay now i'm going to pick one of them and then the values outside the bracket so the values outside the bracket will have 3x minus 2 let's put it in bracket and then we pick one of those in bracket we have x plus 3 in bracket now say greater than or equal to zero please pay attention to this level okay good so let's separate them so we're going to have 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 or x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So we have 3x, we'll take minus 2 to the other side. So we're going to have greater than or equal to 2. And we are looking for x. Let's divide both sides by 3. So we're going to have x is greater than or equal to 2 all over 3. Or on the other side, we'll have x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So we'll take 3 to the other side. So we're going to have 
x is greater than or equal to minus 3. Hello. Good. In this place, we have solved. And we obtained two values, which are x greater than or equal to 2 all over 3, or x is greater than or equal to minus 3. Now, please, let's draw our number line. Let's draw a number line. So, in the number line, let's locate minus 3 and then 2 all over 3. And then you discover that this 2 all over 3, you can write it in decimal. It's the same as 0 0.7. Okay? You are free to write it 0 0.7. Okay? Now, in these two values that we have, which are minus 3 and then 2 all over 3, which of them is bigger? you see that 2 all over 3 is bigger than minus 3, right? Now, you say from this place, which is 0 0.7 or 2 all over 3, you draw your arrow up, then point it forward. Hello, you point it forward. Now, also, in the place, you locate minus 3 in the number line, and then draw the arrow up, because it is less, then you draw the arrow downwards. Now, in this place, you can see clearly that we are having three range of values now number one range of values are the values less than minus three then number two range of values are the numbers in between minus three and 0 0.7 or in between minus three and two all over three and then we have the other range of values which are from two all over three upwards or from 0 0.7 upwards okay now, when we want to write it properly, you're going to say that the first range is x less than minus 3. We say that the first range is x is less than minus 3. That is all the numbers less than minus 3. Now, the second range, you say that x is greater than minus 3, but less than 2 all over 3. Okay? We say that x is greater than minus 3, but less than 2 all over 3. That is, the values in between minus 3 and the 2 all over 3. Okay? Now, or the third value, and then the third value, we say x is greater than 2 all over 3. Okay? Now, you know, we say that we can also write it in decimal form, not in fraction. That is, this 2 all over 3 is the same as 0 0.7. So when you write it in that form, you can say that the range that we're having are x is less than minus 3. That is the first one. Then we'll say x is greater than minus 3, but less than 0 0.7. And then the third range, we say x is greater than 0 0.7. All right? Good. Now, from this place, we have obtained the range. Now, let's draw our sign chart to enable us to find the proper or the accurate range of values that satisfies that inequality. Okay, now let's go. Let's draw our table four by four. Okay, now in our first row, we're going to fix in the range that we are having, and then in our column, we're going to fix the product. You get it? We're going to fix the factors. So the factor that we have are what? 3x minus 2 and then x plus 3. So we're going to fix it there. And under it, we have the product, which is 3x minus 2 times x plus 3. So we're going to put it like this. All right? Good. Now let's go. Let's start from the first range, which is x less than minus 3. So we're going to pick numbers from x less than minus 3. And then let's place it in our factors to see what we're going to have. Now, let's simply pick minus 4. So, we'll pick minus 4 and then let's place it in this uh, factor, 3x minus 2. So, we'll place it in this factor. We're going to have 3, open bracket, minus 4, close bracket, minus 2. So, 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Then we have minus 12, minus 2. So, minus 12, minus 2 is equal to minus 14. So, that means we're going to have minus here. Okay? good okay still in the same range let's also fix this minus 4 in the second factor which is x plus 3 
So when we do so, we're going to have minus 4 plus 3. So when you say minus 4 plus 3, we're going to give you minus 1. So we are having negative. So we're going to have minus. So under our product, we say 3x minus 2. That is the value obtained times the second of x plus 3. That means we're going to have minus times minus. It's going to give us plus. Okay? That means under the product, we have plus. Now let's go to the second range. So in the second range, we're having s greater than minus 3, but less than 2 all over 3. So in this place, we can simply pick minus 1. Okay? Let's use minus 1. Now let's go. Uh, using minus 1, let's fix it in this our factor, which is 3x minus 2. Now when you fix it, we're going to have 3, open bracket, minus 1. Then minus 2. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. So minus 3 minus 2 is equal to minus 5. So we're going to have minus. Now let's go again. Still in the same range, let's still use minus 1. Now let's place it in a second factor, which is x plus 3. So that means we're going to have minus 1 plus 3. So minus 1 plus 3 is equal to 2. So that means we're having positive. That means we're going to have plus. Now, under our product, we're going to say minus times plus is going to give us minus. Now, let's go to the last range. So, in the last range, we have x greater than 2 all over 3. So, let's pick numbers from that place. We can simply pick 2, okay? Now, let's go. Let's use 2 and place in a factor. In the first factor, we have 3x minus 2. So, when we place it, we're going to have 3, open bracket, 2, close bracket, minus 2. So 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. So we have 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. That means we're having positive 4. That means we're going to have plus. Okay? Good. Still in the same range, let's also use 2. Let's place it in a second factor. So in a second factor, we have x plus 3. Okay? Now let's go. We're going to have 2 plus 3. And when you say 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, that means we're having positive then it's going to write plus. And then we say plus times plus is equal to plus. All right? Yes, we have fill a sign chart. Now, let's look at the most important segment. That is how to conclude. How to do what? Conclude. So, in this place, we have seen the values that we obtain from the range. Okay? So let's focus on our product, on our product, okay? So on our product, in the first range, which is x raised than minus 3, we are having positive, plus. And then the second range, we are having negative. Then in the third range, we are having positive, okay? Now let's go to our question. The question that is given to us, we say, find the range of values of x for which 3x squared minus 3x is greater than or equal to 6 minus 10x. All right? So we have greater than. So under our product, we're going to be looking at the range as having positive because we have greater than or equal to. So that means the product or the range that we're having its product to be positive, we have x less than minus 3 and then x greater than 2 all over 3. So in a conclusion, we are going to say that thus the original inequality is true if x is less than or equal to minus 3 or x is greater than or equal to 2 all over 3. That is to say that when you pick any number from these two range, it will satisfy that inequality. That is exactly what we are asked to prove. And then we have used a sign chart to show that when you pick any number from minus 3 downwards, it will satisfy this given inequality. And at the same time, when you pick any number from 2 all over 3 upwards, it's going to also satisfy the inequality. So we say, toss, the original inequality is true if x is less than or equal to minus 3 or x is greater than or equal to 2 all over 3 all right yes thank you very much for watching 
please if you have not subscribed please do so and then remember to turn on the notification please like a video and then remember to share them thank you see you next time